What's up everybody? Today on Knife Banner, we have got Mote's collection. Mote, what's up? How you doing, man? I'm pretty excited to be here. Dude, okay, so you call this the garage sale collection. Yeah, I basically went out to my garage when you asked me to bring in some collection knives and I said, what does Kurt want to see? And I went through some shoe boxes and we found all these. I love it. It's pretty good, man. Now he's got some <laughs> awesome stories behind some of these, so I think we should just jump right into it. Uh, he's also got some very unique items, which are, it's mind blowing. No. Let's just, let's yeah. just do it. Let's look. So we have a couple things here. So we have some customs on the table, some fixed blades, some folders, um, an ax. It's pretty solid. Oh yeah. Or a hatchet. Excuse me. We'll get into that. Uh, first up, give that to Carson, is a knife scale. So it's not an actual knife. But uh, this was made by, I believe Tim Reeve did this for me um, for, I think it was Christmas, I think is when he did it. He actually took a Sebenza 21 scale from the previous model. Now they're onto the 31s and they took a 21 and he laser engraved my name into it. Back in the day, Ben and I did a video um, and I had this embroidered like crew neck sweater on mm -hmm. and, I, <laughs> and it had Mote embroidered on it in like oh, a nice. Supreme box logo. Just being me, I guess, I don't know, is weird. But anyway, so Tim got a kick out of it and then ended up sending me this scale for Christmas. Um, I was telling Kurt earlier, I haven't put it on anything yet because it's too pretty. <laughs> Dude, so I don't wanna, yeah, you can't mar that up. Yeah, so my thought process is it'll just kind of live either in a box or on a shelf somewhere so I can, you know, in thank the garage. Tim for the gift. Yeah, in the garage, definitely on the shop or in the shop in the garage somewhere, probably on a shelf with some oily rags or something, but you're welcome to. <laughs> Dude, that thing's pretty cool. And especially just to have someone send you that custom piece as a, a thank you, a gift, you know, yeah. that's super cool. No, it's definitely something different. Adds a unique flair to a pretty, an already pretty Sabenza 21. So, right. you know, keep her pretty. Heck yeah. But I like it. That's cool. What else you got? All right, moving on. There's Let's a lot. See. What are which one are you gonna go for? I don't know. So many. Let's go. We talked about a Leatherman earlier. We did. So let's go with a Leatherman. So this is a Charge Plus, I believe. Let's see if I can set that up. Um, I think it's been Cerakoted. I'm pretty sure. I know Leatherman does their own. I believe it's Cerico in-house. Um, so you can customize some of your tools. This is on a Charge Plus platform. This came by way of David Haberly, who is the, I believe the vice president of North American sales. Um, we had a meeting one day, he, he loves to fish, I love to fly fish. So he presented me with this nice little gift here. Came with a cool little sheath, which is a little bit different for most of these. Has the traditional leather sheath um, that you find on like the Heritage series and some of their other models. But then he had this cool fish pattern put on it, which is nifty. And so we have one on the front and then we have another one on the back. Um, he also did some customization on the blade for me. He put a topographical map on one side and then just in case it falls out of my truck while I'm at the river, <laughs> so everybody knows, if you steal it, nice. it's stolen from Tomote. So, <laughs> 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 so there's some cool customization on this. Um, I, I've been fortunate enough to be in the position that I am um, here at Blade HQ so I get to meet a lot of the the vendors, the makers, and the suppliers, um, and built some really good relationships with them. So they're, you know, like I said, I'm fortunate enough to, to receive some of these gifts. Um, and something like this is just, you know, it's, we know it's a run of the mill, you know, charge plus where it's an inline skew, but the little customization and the thought behind it definitely goes, you know, miles. So it's cool. Custom. Custom. That's, that's two right Custom. off the bat. Two right Custom. off the bat. Dang. What else we got in here? Dude. I, yeah, I like those leather sheets. It's like modern, traditional yeah, leather. It's cool. It looks good. No, it's it's one of those that's kind of flashy, but I can appreciate it. So, you know. Dude. Also, if you guys want any of these, just drop your Venmo in the comments. Don't drop your then... Venmo in the comments. <laughs> Don't listen we'll, to them. We'll talk pricing later, guys. Um, so, let's see what we got here. The next one up, um, let's go with Benchmade. All right. All right. So, here's one that's a little bit different. We'll give this to Carson on this view. Um, 
This is your, you know, an infidel. We're all pretty familiar with this OTF. It's been uh, an inline skew for Benchmade for quite some time. It's one of our best sellers here, obviously at Blade HQ. This variation puts a little twist on it. So our previous rep that we had at Benchmade, he, he's a good friend and he works for another company now, but he actually sent me this as a gift. Um, he knows that I've been searching for an all black variation. So if you look at the standard infidels we have, most of them have like a gray button or a silver firing button. Um, and then usually the hardware is like a silver or, right. or a satin. Um, this one is all blacked out. So we do have a black button, black hardware, and then we have the all black blade. So it's murdered out, if you will. Murdered out. So another customized variation of, of, a, of an inline skew. Um, rocks the S30V steel, which I know isn't common on most of these. Most of them have D2. Um, the way it was explained to me, and I don't know if this is correct, so Benchman, if you want to jump in the comments, you're more than welcome. But I think it's a federal government exclusive. So it's a cool. little bit harder to get a hold of. Right. Definitely not part of the federal government, but uh, I appreciate the uh, thought. As far as we know. <laughs> as far as we know. As far as we know. But yeah, cool model. Um, I've carried it quite a bit. I know the blade has some wear on it. You can see some of it. I don't know if Carson can get that, but it's it's been a good knife. And like I said, the action's great. It's really soft. I like I like the release on the button. So check out the inline infidels that we have on the website. I absolutely love this knife for multiple reasons. One, it's the perfect combo. All black, right? Yeah. But two, it's a lizard face. <laughs> you know it's a lizard face. Carson, get in there on that lizard face. We got eyeballs, a mouth, and these are like the spikes on his <laughs> spine. Now watch. Leave it to Kurt. Oh look, there's an ant. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, it's, a, it's a lizard knife. knife. Anyway. Bet you it's not a lizard knife, I like it. <laughs> dude, it's cool. But yeah, no. dude, that's, the all black is definitely the way to go. Yeah, and uh, you've got all sorts of random stuff. There's all kinds of cool stuff. What else you got? Well, we just did Benchmade, so let's go with the infamous. The yes. infamous, you guys have all seen this. I've been messaged about this, I don't know how many different times, in emails and everything else. So we have the uh, This is the one. Only one. This is the Kalashnikov we always talk about. So this guy's been in, I think, multiple videos, a couple different photos. Um, so interesting tidbit about this knife. So I've had this knife, I think, I want to say close to five and a half, six years. Dang. Um, I started at Blade HQ in customer service. So if you got a rude email from me back in the day, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but I started with uh, Blade Human customer service, and then they had me work the storefront, and then I went to receiving after that. And I was doing some buying there, but one of the receivers that used to be in our building, his name was Adam, I can't remember his last name, but Adam. Um, and he had used this knife for quite some time, and I know he'd ran it through the belt quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, and then when he moved on to another location or wherever he went, he actually left this knife on my desk. My father carried this sword and his father before him. So it's kind of been passed down through the receiving core at Blade HQ. Nice. But I'm not going to say that Adam did most of this. I will say that I did most of this. Yeah. <laughs> but we had a workshop in the back. Shout out workshop. Um, and we would sharpen our knives as we'd get through all these packages. So as you guys can imagine, we have you know thousands of packages come through daily. And so this was my primary knife. And I use this, I think, almost every day as I received for probably two years. How many boxes do you think it's cut open? I honestly don't know. Probably. You don't have like a specific 50, count? I don't know, 40, 50,000 probably. Something around there. But it's, it's a lot it's, of boxes. Yeah, it's definitely been heavily used. We definitely used. get boxes. We get boxes in boxes. Oh, yeah. There's sometimes it's three box deep. Um, so. The other thing is, like, I know people always give me crap about the spring because they're like, that can't be the original spring. That can't be the original spring. This has only had one spring replaced. So I don't think we replaced any of like the bushings or anything like that, but it's had one spring replacement. It's never had a pocket clip replacement and it won't because it lives in the pocket. Um, but I still use this thing. So packages <laughs> come in from custom makers, whatever. If I have to go out and receive during the holiday, which is what a lot of us do, um, this thing comes out with me and we blast through boxes. So it's hit staples and everything you can imagine. So I love it. I think I've even thrown it in a pallet and stuck it. So, but don't abuse your knives. Don't, don't abuse, don't abuse your knives unless you want to.
Dude, that's just hard, good hard use. Good hard use. I even tried to freeze the blade at one point just to see what it would do. Really? Yeah, man. I was, I'm gonna find a nitrogen tank and we're gonna dip it in there and see what happens. <clears throat> Dude, that would be so fun. We should do that. That's a good idea. Shout out to Boker for making something real quality. You know what I mean? Like Boker Seriously. makes good stuff, but like this thing is evidence that that Kalashnikov that you spend your 40 plus dollars on is going to last for years. Like, yeah. If you want to test it, I'll bring it to Blade Show and you guys can come look at it. Yes, Blade but Show. This It'll thing is a there. hammer, man. I'm a big fan of this. Yeah. So yeah, this thing will stay on me forever, I think. Until I find a receiver that's worthy to be passed down. You know what I mean? <laughs> Shout out to Caden because you do a great job out there. So. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah, so, dude. Yeah. The infamous Kalashnikov. Freaking Kalashnikov. Yeah. Dude. What else we got? You have some good stuff. We got some good stuff here. All right, we're gonna so, move on some big. Babies. Also, let's do it. I don't. I can't remember if we said this or not, but Motif's collection is really big, and so the these knives here on the table are just the small selection he grabbed out of the dusty box in his garage. It's true. So, we will be having a part two to Mote's collection eventually. We'll try and bring some good stuff. If there's specifics that you guys want to see, let us know. Um, I tried to grab some stuff that's definitely harder to attain. Right. Um, so. And that, that's the stuff we want to see. Yeah, I mean, we'll see how many people we can make mad. All right, so, what else you got? So, we're gonna go back to Benchmade. Um, this is one I wouldn't be surprised if they asked for back at some point, but I've had it for like a year, so. I don't know what you call that, squatter's rights maybe? I don't know, I don't know. But, <laughs> so, this bad boy, we've all seen the uh, 940 that we launched, the exclusive variation, it was the M4, um, coated black blade, black hardware, black clip. That did extremely well. But what you guys don't know, because I've seen a lot of comments where people are saying, you know, is there a satin version coming, or what the heck happened with that? So we did try and do a satin version originally, and this was the prototype that we weren't sent. Um, so these scales come out of the Benchmade house. So this is an actual J940 that was made by Benchmade um, as part of the prototyping. And this one has S30V, so it doesn't have the M4. I don't know how I get a hold of a, a raw M4 blade, Benchmade. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> but I know we did have some problems with um, corrosion and things like that as they were trying to, to house the steel and work on it. So the M4 as of now will not come out in the satin or uncoated blade, but this is the one that we do have in house. The one. <laughs> that, that happened to fall into my pocket. It happens a lot. Um, it has some green standoffs, so it is a little bit different than the traditional. I'll try and get that there for cars since you guys can't see it. Um, typical satin blade, it's rocking S30V. And then we just have these jade scales that you can't get anywhere, like I said. The other nice part is, I know that we buy a lot of aftermarket scales, but a lot of times there's like some play in them, things like that, because they're not, you know, they're taking off a, a rough rendering or, right, or an example. Right, right, right. So the nice yeah, part about not these Not all is, of them are perfect. No, and right. these are perfect. Yes. <laughs> yes, so, they are. So it's definitely, you know, it's one of those pieces I like to carry around, one, to rub it in a little bit. Uh, it's a flex. It's, it's definitely a flex. It's a flex. Uh, but the other thing is, is I really do like the color combination. I think the satin looks good on this specific model. Um, but the closest thing you guys will get, unfortunately, will be just the black variation with the M4. So Still check it cool out. though. Still cool though. Still way cool. I love this knife. It's been great. I've carried it for probably a year now. And it's the wear has been extremely well. I think there's some marks on the pocket clip, but nothing crazy. Sorry, Kurt. I stabbed your table. What? I don't know why you gotta do that. Kurt hates it. He almost <sighs> put an ax in the table before we started. We'll oh. actually talk about the ax now. I, since I Kurt legit loves it. felt like Jamie when he used to get so mad at me for poking the table. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, I'm turning into Kurt's turning into all father here. Is all father. Doing. So one eye. This bad boy comes. Now, to us. Okay, okay, this this kid has a cool story. Oh yeah. Okay, let's start there. So we're gonna put that down. So, Liam Hoffman is who's the, who this came from. Um, Liam is from North Carolina. I believe he's on the border of Tennessee and North Carolina. Um, but when I found Liam, I actually discovered him on Instagram. Uh, I was given the task of finding some additional hatchets and axes to bring into to Blade HQ. I can't remember exactly what Liam had, but I think he was like at 400 followers or something like that. Like I literally just stumbled upon Liam's page. Saw this kid who looked like Popeye, 
swinging a hammer. Like, like Popeye. Like, if you guys know Liam, like, Liam has forearms that are gigantic. And he, the guy looks like, I mean, he, you can tell he swings a hammer and anvil all day. A hammer. He swings a hammer all day. Um, but his shop was like 200 square feet. He was pumping out these axes and hatchets and everything else. And everything was from raw material. So it wasn't like he was having things water jet or anything like that. He was literally hammering and pounding out. He's forging. Raw steel. For yeah, forging his axes. Um, and the other cool thing is like the handles that we'll show you here. I remember seeing him in one of his earlier videos where he just has a draw knife. He's literally busting them out with a draw knife and then putting them on a belt sander and cleaning them up. So everything was handmade, um, which crazy. really intrigued me. So I started working with Liam. He actually came out for a blacksmithing convention. So we were able to meet, um, he was 19 at the time. I think I went to buy him a drink at like a restaurant for dinner and he couldn't even order a beer. And I was like, <laughs> okay. Youngster. Youngster. So here we have, this is exclusive to Blade HQ. Um, this is the Wasatch hatchet. So this, obviously we're in the Wasatch front. So we have named the line after that. Liam. Liam obviously was a big part of that, but this is the smaller variation. This is the hatchet. We do have an ax. Um, we have some other variants of it as well that will be coming out later. So we'll see Stay when those tuned. land, but yeah, they're good ones. Um, this guy was cool because Liam actually put a custom handle on it for me. So it has a little bit more of a defined pattern in the grain. Um, he cleaned up the pole a little, bit, a little bit differently. So if you look at the back of it, um, I think a lot of them are rounded off. Um, this one's a little chamfered on the edges and then it's nice and polished. Um, the thing that I really like about Liam's axes and the tools that he that he makes is this real raw rustic finish on them. Yeah. Um, definitely plays well to the axe and its surroundings and then also like the usability as we use it. You know, you're not going to see these crazy Mars or like, these nasty right. marks show up in it. Um, yeah, it just blends in. Yeah. It blends into the patina. Definitely. And then one of the other things I think is overlooked a lot with his products is the sheath. Shout out to Karen, his mother, who actually makes these. Um, and she, these are freaking amazing. Amazingly well-made leather sheets. No, definitely. Like, I'm gonna move that actually quick. Here, I'll hold it. But, <laughs> thanks. Um, his mom actually makes all of these by hand. So I know she does some other leather goods for him, like aprons and other things, but she makes all of these beautiful sheaths that come with every single hatchet and ax that they provide. Um, you know, they're really thick bound leather so that when you do drop that on, you know, the bevel or whatever, the cutting edge, as you're working with the tool, it won't actually damage. Um, but I, I'm a big fan of these. I know these are super hard to get. Like on the secondary market, I've looked at them. And I mean, even like a large used felling axe is going for like 1200 bucks. And I mean, that's beat to heck. So the craftsmanship Whoa. is definitely there. So if you're looking for a good tool, a good outdoor use, you know, axe that you can take with you at the camp or anything like that, like, this is what you're looking for. That's handmade. Handmade, like this is forged. So if you're at Blade Show, find Liam and beg him to put you on a list. Cause I think that's about the only way you can get it at this point. Dude, but cool. They're so cool. Yeah. So cool. I just want to go hang out with him for like a day. That's what I'm saying. And just watch him do his thing. I want to see how his mom <coughs> manipulates that leather. Dude, she'll... she's got, she's got skills. He'll probably put us to work. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, dude. I don't look like Popeye. No, man. I'm way out of it. So, <laughs> Liam, that's good on you, brother. Heck yeah. Well, right. Cool. What else you got? Um, let's move to something fun. It's a little bit older. So this guy right here is, I believe, from 1999, 2000 ish. Yeah. Y2K. Y2K. Right at the beginning. So <laughs> this is a ProTech prototype. So this, okay. Your finger was in the way. Cut that out and make sure we got that out, Carson. <laughs> so this is a ProTech prototype. It's a single action OTF. It's called the Tantilla. There it is. So this one's the rocking. Tantilla. Tantilla, right? Like I said, 1999 slash 2000, I believe is when Dave made these. Dave, you can correct me on this, but I don't even know if he was making knives full time. I think he was still an English teacher. I think is what it was. Maybe a really? science teacher. You can, somebody can crucify you for that in the comments, but. I believe he was still making knives part-time. Um, Devin Thomas Damascus. Nice. Uh, jazz handle, which you do see on some of the pro -techs still. Is that like jazz handle? Yes, jazz hands. Nice. <laughs> Just kidding, sorry Dave. Um, 
Dave's like, I hate that. Yeah, he's like, this is not a good representation <laughs> of, my, of my brand right now. Um, one of the cool things is this cutout, which actually helps lock that blade back down in. You don't see that a lot on I was going to ask knives. about that. Yeah, I mean, a machined out blade like that for the sole intention of like trying to lock that down, which I believe is what it's for. I, I don't dare take this thing apart. I wouldn't like, either. It's too pretty. It's it's in perfect condition. The only thing that I don't have for it is the box, which is a big thing in the knife collection world. Um, but cool thing about this, and Kurt and I were talking about this earlier. He was asking how I get these knives. So a couple of these knives came to us by way of collection. Um, I am fortunate enough to where I get to look through most of the collection emails before they're funneled over to whatever we do with them. Um, so if they're knives that come in that I like, <laughs> and we don't have boxes or paperwork and, and it's gonna affect the value of the knife, a lot of times I'll just try and purchase it myself. So that is some of the ways that you're seeing some of these collection knives come to be. So if you were one of the people that sent me these knives, thank you. <laughs> but no. he has all this old cool stuff. It's true, like it really is. I know a lot of people ask how I get it, but it's really just, you know, I'm in a fortunate position really. But yeah, this thing is cool. Carson could get another shot of that Damascus. Um, yeah, man, that's rad. That's cool. Now you have another pro tip, right? I do. Let's so check that out. This guy, before I bring it up, I gotta remember the name. It's the Duke, but this is the light version. That's the what light it is. The Duke. The light. The Duke light. The Duke light. So this is another pro tech. Uh, this guy, I believe. Oh, this is number. This is number one hundred. So that's a good one. Heck so, yeah. Cool thing about this, Kurt and I have talked about this knife quite a bit. Actually, a lot of people have heard me vent about this in the building because I think this is one of the most perfect pocket knives you can get. Um, when I think of a pocket knife, I think of something like this that has, it's super lightweight, it's comfortable in the pocket, there's not a lot of moving parts. Um, the other thing is the blade has substantial thickness so I can use the heck right. out of it. Um, I haven't beat this one up too bad because I know it's older and it's hard to get. So I've tried to be really light on it, but this is, it's ATS-34, which I don't think there's a lot of people still using it. It's a WR Clark design. The interesting thing about these G10 handles on this is there is no liner inside that. I don't know if Carson can actually Which see is that. awesome. Yeah, so it's super lightweight. Um, you know, you don't have the, the extra weight. You also don't have the extra, the, the added diameter for the liners to be right. Thin, right? So it right. stays pretty minimalistic in the pocket. Um, the pocket clip has a, you know, a cool setup here as far as like these torques go and how they're attached. But as far as it goes, it sits extremely deep in the pocket. I do like everything about it. I wish we could get, get it made again. <laughs> uh, I do know there, you know, I mean, as far as like cost, I don't know what it'd be to machine the G10 or whatever, but I think this is one of the most perfect pocket knives that's ever made, honestly. Now that's a bold that's, statement. It's a bold statement, but like the spring hasn't been, I mean, the, the spring hasn't been reset, but like, that's pretty oh, snappy. Dude, it's good. It's a good one. I was playing with it before we started. Yeah, but, and there's no safety mechanism. That's the other thing. I know people are gonna ask about that, but there is no safety on this. Um, haven't had it go off in the pocket. Haven't bumped it and set it off yet, but I'm sure that'll come eventually from more wear and tear. But yeah, if you're asking like what my perfect pocket knife is, this is along the lines of it. I like it. Yeah, it's cool. That's cool. Yeah, man, those are some cool pro -tech. Dude, what else? Let's oh. just keep going, man. Okay. A lot of talking for you. I'm sorry, but man, I'm interested. This is cool. I mean, because we're getting to the stuff that like even excites me more. So we're in. Right. Let's so do it. So this bad boy is a bird and trout knife from Eldon Talley. Um, if you don't know who Eldon Talley is, you should definitely look him up. Look into, he's a, he's a local maker here, probably 10 minutes uh, west of us. Um, does phenomenal hand ground blades, uh, handles. He also is really well known in the Balasong community for his Talasongs. Yep. Um, high end custom Balasongs, channeled, channeled handles. This happens to be a burden trout knife that was completed for me. Cool story about this knife. All right. So Eldon has a shop here. Um, it's not very big, but he has, if you walk into his shop, there are blades and knives hanging everywhere that are beautiful. And I mean like stuff that you would typically see on the market today that people would charge, you know, $1,500 to $3,000 for. And Eldon won't sell them because his aren't perfect. So like you walk in I've these- I've seen these. Yeah. 
like you walk in and you see the most beautiful fixed blade you've ever seen. And like you, and I, I feel like I have a pretty good gauge on inspecting knives and I'll inspect them and look at them and I'm saying, this is perfect though. And he's like, oh, I pushed a pin a little too far. And I'm like, can I have it? And he's like, no, no, because it's not perfect. I'm just like, all right. So while I was sorting through Eldon's stuff to try and find myself something, <laughs> uh, this little guy happened to be on the counter and I asked him a question. I was like, what's up with this? So the, the handle wasn't finished. So if we look at it, it's rounded off now, right? The blade's completed, the grind's completed, it's all polished up. Um, the handle wasn't finished. I don't think the bolster was finished and the blade was a little rough still. So I just said to Eldon, I was like, hey, what if I had you make me a knife? And he's like, well, that one's been sitting on the shelf for 10 years. And I said, wait, what? And he's like, dude, I almost had it finished. He's like, I just never finished it. He's like, would you like that one? And I said, well, yeah, that's fantastic. Go in my fly fishing pack, like it's perfect size. And so, it was probably like a day later. Are you serious? No, no joke. And Eldon showed up to our office and he just walked in and had this wrapped up in some bubble wrap and was like, here you go. And then he literally talked to me for like 10 seconds and then walked out. Like he didn't have me pay for it. He didn't have me do anything. So <laughs> Eldon made me this custom that, bird trap. That's totally Eldon too. Totally Eldon. Like even just the other day, he just like popped in. I was like, oh, what's up, dude? Yeah, one he of the nicest guys I'll ever for a little meet. bit and then, yeah. Easily. Eldon, Eldon's, he's a gem. He's is a what stud, he is. Yeah. for sure. He's a stud, yes. But it's cool, Eldon's mark, I don't know, and I don't know if you can see it underneath there. Right underneath, there's an ET under there, so we kept it extremely minimal and clean, which I really yeah. like. Um, but yeah, I, I think if people, like I said, if you don't know who Eldon Talley is, you should look up who he is and kind of where he learned his knife making skills, because the guy is easily one of the best knife makers in the world, easily. I agree. Um, but yeah, cool. Maple Burrow handle, nice Damascus on it. The Damascus pattern is solid. So I'm a big fan of this. This one also, like I had intention to like put it on my fly fishing pack, you know, kind of beat the crap out of it. Um, but if I, as I've looked at it and as my friendship's grown with Eldon, I just like have kind of come to cherish it more. So it's, it's right. definitely lived on the desk and, and in a case, but it's, it's nice. a pretty piece. Yeah, I like that Maple Burrow. That's yeah. cool. Different. Um, should we go to the big boys? Let's see, how many do we have left? In there. Okay. Two and one. Yeah, let's go, hey, let's do the uh, Chris Reeve. Okay. Go back to the Reeves. I don't, you're gonna have to hold one. Oh, I'd Which love Which one do you want, you want the bigger or the smaller? Uh, bigger one, for okay. sure. <laughs> there you go. So these, a lot of you guys do recognize these. These are the Sakayos, I believe. That is how we say it, Tim. If not, I apologize. Uh, these are, chef knives that Chris Reeve had put out as of, I believe last year, the year before they are discontinued. Yep. Um, so <laughs> these are a little different. If you notice the finish is a lot different than the standard. The standard blades have a, a really noticeable stone wash finish um, that are great at hiding any kind of marks or anything like that as you use these in your kitchen. The Reeves were kind enough to provide me with two <laughs> custom variations that were mirror polished. So these have a mirror finish on them um, all the way through the back end. So you can see it run the full length of the knife. I can turn it over this way too and show you. Um, they're beautiful. I mean, oh and as, a, as an actual kitchen set, these things are money. <laughs> like, uh, well, not only that, but these things are very unique as far as the grind. Yeah, so it's a chisel ground blade, which you, I mean, you see in some chef's knives, you don't see in a lot of the kitchen stuff that you buy on the standard stuff you get like it some of the more big box stores. Um, but these are housing a chisel grind, so it does help while you're slicing, you know, those vegetables and things on your on your cutting block. You know, takes a nice even away from you um, slicing motion. But I'm a big fan of these because they are impossible to get. Yeah, so, oh yeah. So like the Sakaio itself is a fantastic knife, but then going back to what I said, I've been extremely blessed. Um, having good friends in the community that are able to give me things like this and provide things like this to me. You know, I'm, I'm extremely fortunate. So these are something that'll, you know, live in my kitchen for probably the rest of my life, honestly. Um, so that when Tim does come over to my house, he's not wondering what I did with them. So they're not just hiding in a box. <laughs> but I have sliced some things with them. So they have been used a little bit um, and they work phenomenally. They just, like everything, they're a little too pretty to beat up. So, so. Dude, these things are cool. This is like next level craftsmanship yeah you can venmo me for pretty much anything but these so <laughs> we had a good run but yeah they're really pretty 
So cool. All right, last two. Two more. Let's do it. We're gonna get into these ones are mode. these ones are cool, guys. These are cool. one of them just screams Mote. Does so this. A lot of our Balasong fans are gonna recognize um, this is a Benchmade Model Thirty One. So this is old school. Um, like how old? I don't know the exact date, and somebody can call me out on this, but I'm gonna say late '80s, real early '90s. Um, nice. And the reason this one's a little bit different, like I said, most of them are. You know, most battle songs are, are pretty run of the mill, but like this guy has a pocket clip on it and it's really, really small. So I do like, you know, being able to put this in the pocket and hang out with it. But the cool thing on this one is the back of the blade. She stamped pre-production. So this is, <laughs> this is one of those, like I said, there's a lot of these out there. I know that people have these in the collection, but this one is mint. Um, it's in pretty much perfect condition aside from maybe like some marks from the latch. But like I said, this is pre-production. This is number 438 of 500. So there are only 500 pre-production of these made. Um, I'm not sure what these would go for at this point. Balasong community, help me out. I know a couple years we probably sold one for 500 bucks, 400 bucks. But I don't know how to flip them from the YouTube live video. Remember that? Right. Not good with it. But partially serrated. Cool little knife. I don't know. I think I think the size that is perfect. thing's old, man. Old That's school. vintage. Old school. But like the size of it, I don't know if you guys can see this. That's fantastic. So me and Mote were comparing hands the other day and we decided we have similar hands. Mine are just meatier. Meat hooks. Meat hooks. Meat hooks. Yeah. Kurt has meat hooks. I got long skinny fingers, so it's like the only thing skinny on me. So. All right, guys. This screams Mote. All right, this does scream Mote. This, another gift from my friends at Leatherman. Um, Supreme has done a, a couple collabs with people in our community. I know Sog has done some. Supreme has done some with Leatherman. Um, I don't know who else. There, there's been a couple other knife makers though. Yeah. Um, David Haverly knows I love my Supreme and Limited sneakers. I know there are some other guys that were asking about my sneaker collection and things like that. I do love them. Dude, that's a whole nother YouTube <laughs> channel. That's Yeah, that's a different channel. <laughs> Um, this is cool because like I said, it was a collaboration with Supreme. The sheath is what really gets me. It's that traditional, you know, leather sheath from Leatherman. And then you put a little gold leaf on it and some, some red paint and it, it looks even better. Yeah. So, that's cool. so then we have the, uh, the rebar, just your standard rebar, nothing crazy. Um, we can open it up and show everybody, but yeah, just a little something limited. The other thing is the box is red, which is kind of cool. I know a lot of you guys don't like this stuff, but I'm a kid at heart, so I love this stuff. Mote likes collecting the unique stuff. Yeah, anything that's unique, uh, hard, hard to, to get, get. yeah, yep. limited, tends to be something that I kind of gravitate towards. So if you got something cool, send me an email. I'll try he, to buy it. He has an entire bedroom set up for his sneaker collection. It's true. Yeah, garage, all kinds of stuff. Crazy. We gotta match things, right? So like my Leatherman matches my hats, my shoes. It's, right. It's a good thing. Dude, that is an insane collection. I can hardly wait until we do this again. Well, we'll try. <laughs> Dude, such a great time. All right, guys, if you guys like Mote's collection, leave comments down and below. If you have questions about Mote's collection, also leave comments. And- uh, Your Venmo. Oh. <laughs> No, I'm just playing. I swear I'm just playing. This is all, like, I love all this. <laughs> Dude, I'm stoked. That was awesome, man. Thank yeah. you for hey. sharing. Thank you. Dude, yeah. awesome. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for us today. And uh, I guess we'll next time. see you on the next one. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Knife Banter today. It was great. But uh, if you guys like what we did today, feel free to uh, check out the website, see if you can find any of these, which is probably highly unlikely, but good luck. Um, check out the playlist below if you like these videos. And feel free to subscribe to Blade HQ.